guys, Catherine reporting for Kids First, and today we are interviewing Julia, uh, Julio Vincent Gambuto and Anastasia Ganias Gellin for the upcoming film, Team Marco. Julio is the director, executive producer, and screenwriter for the film Team Marco. He hails from Staten Island, New York, graduated from Harvard, and completed his training as a film director in the USC School of Cinematic Arts. He also founded Borough 5, an independent film and television content company that helped bring Team Marco to life. Anastasia is an actress who plays Anna and is Marco's mother in the film. She originally is from Massachusetts, graduated from Suffolk University, and currently divides her time between Los Angeles and New York. She also speaks fluent Greek. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thanks for having us. Hi, Catherine. Hi. <laughs> so, Julio, this film is about family, friendship, and a boy and his, with his grandmother getting to, or grandfather, my God, sorry, grandfather getting to know each other with the mom and daughter caught in between. So which, or what did you do to help the actors create the sense of a real family in the film? Great question. So uh, I made them spend as much time together as possible, <laughs> which is kind of hard when you work with uh, professionals who have busy lives. So uh, we were very fortunate. The actors are really fantastic people. And so when they spent as much time on set together as they possibly could, uh, we made sure that we rehearsed as much as we could. We made sure that they had lunch together as much as they could. All those fun things that help, you know, to foster a bond between them. Yeah, that's always, that's a really good idea, you know, just to make sure that they can get to know as much about each other so they can, you know, uh, feel more, you know, related. And then, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and so, Anastasia, your role has you caring for both a parent and a child, as many families do today. And your character is a single mom and wants to balance her son's obsession with technology. What real life experiences or role models were you able to draw upon uh, to play this role so convincingly? Ah, uh, well, I'm part of the sandwich generation myself. I've got older parents, I've got younger children, and um, it is quite an interesting um, dynamic to be part of. It was really lovely to kind of bring that real life experience to set and um, you know I'm someone that really appreciates and loves the wisdom that people like Nono's generation can give me it's something I hold on to very dearly and I also really enjoy lots of play and I'm inspired by the younger generation so for me I thought it was such a great gift to be able to jump in and work with both of them um, like I do in real life. Those are my two favorite things to be a part of, these two generations, to bring them together and to learn from them. Yeah, well, it's great that you can have some past experiences to, you know, bring everything together and make it, you know, feel right. And uh, Julio, this is your first feature film and you were the real driving force between, or behind Team Marco as the director, executive producer, and screenwriter. So in previous interviews, you indicated that you got the idea when you witnessed your nephew interacting with his electronics and not his family. So, Good research, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk a little more about that moment and how long it took from an idea to script to fundraising to casting to production? Sure. So uh, it's been about four years now, which has been a long process, a wonderful one, but a long journey. And the whole movie really started when I walked into my nephew's house. I have a nephew named Marco, who at the time was about eight years old. And he didn't look up from his screen. He didn't look away from his iPad when I walked in. And in our family, that's very strange. And so, um, you know, I immediately, very strangely became my grandfather. Like I was saying, come on, get off the screen, come say hello to your uncle. And, um, you know, I always consider myself a young person. And suddenly in that moment, I wasn't, I was the older generation. So it was a very weird moment, but it was the mo moment that the movie was born. And then we started talking, I started talking with my writing partner who is a good, good friend of mine from the sixth grade. We've known each other for 30 years. And uh, he and I started to develop the script. We worked on the script for about a year, year and a half. And then we raised money. Um, I must have had about 150 dinners all over Los Angeles and New York. And uh, that was a long and hard process. 
and I raised the capital to the money to make the movie. And then we went into production about two years ago. So it's been a long process, but uh, the best part is now getting to share it with the world. Yeah. Well, movies surprisingly take like way longer than you would think <laughs> they would. So, you know, when you do, yep. you're like, whoa. <laughs> so yeah, that's very, that's very interesting. And so are you again, uh, you're from Staten Island and this movie was filmed on location on Staten Island. So, and you also incorporated scenes from where you went to school and incorporated old movie footage of your own grandmother. So the film is obviously very personal to you. And so was there any doubt about where you were going to this film or to film this movie and sharing so many personal elements? Was it hard to put so much of your life onto the screen? Yeah. That's such a great question, Catherine. Um, it wasn't hard, it was very special. And, um, you know, I think as an artist, the privilege I get is I get to share my life and my experience and my. Um, view of the world with um, with as many people who will listen. So, you know, it's um, it's a unique opportunity and a special opportunity and one that I don't take lightly. And uh, so I knew when we were going to make a feature film that I, it had to be at home. I also really believe that stories are meant to be told in specific places and that there's a reason that stories are told in that place. And I think Staten Island is, is a place really special to me. I grew up there. But it's also a place with a really, really strong community, uh, a strong Italian American community, uh, a place where grandparents and grandkids uh, all live in the same house very often. And so that's not always the case, but you know, it, it happens definitely in my hometown. So uh, while the movie is not just for Italian people and not just for people from New York, it's for everybody and every family, uh, it was special for me to, to shoot it in my hometown. And I thought it was great that, yeah, you didn't have to be in Staten Island to relate to any anything in the movie. You know, it was really great just to see like a nice family uh, come together and, you know, have fun outside. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And so Anastasia, among all the cast, what real life personality uh, is most like your character or their character in Team Marco? And uh, did you get to eat any of the rainbow cookies or were they <laughs> only eaten by Owen and Anthony? Uh, the rainbow cookies were eaten by all of us, predominantly <laughs> Owen, I believe. And the, your first question was, which character do I think is most like his, him or herself? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would have to say mine geez I really would I, I I do think so you know I think that um after getting to know them really well you know it was it was it was kind of stuff I'm wearing right on my sleeve going through a lot of that stuff on my own those themes that um, we were struggling with parenting um again like I said being part of a sandwich generation trying to continue bonds um, of culture and faith and family and so, um, you know, she was, she's gritty, she's funny. She's kind of um, finding her, her feet for the first time in a long time. And, um, you know, as a new kind of parent, I am too, always rediscovering and discovering. Uh, so I, I think Anna, I think Anna, not just because I play Anna, but because I really think so. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> you know, you can say that you can relate to your character really well, yeah. Absolutely. All right. And then uh, can you share something surprisingly positive that is a result of the pandemic that you did not expect? Sure. I have always had a major passion for Greek extra virgin olive oil and all of a sudden I am selling it. <laughs> and I woke up this morning thinking how in the world did that happen? And I said, <laughs> the pandemic that's how so you know i'm in sales all of a sudden <laughs> all right how about, uh, you julio uh well the pandemic has been surprising in many many ways um i am i am not married at the moment and so it has been a very strange experience to spend hundreds and hundreds of days by yourself I'm beginning to feel like uh, Tom Hanks in that movie with the volleyball. Wilson! <laughs> yeah, so um, it, it, I'm learning a lot about myself. I'm learning how to cook. I'm probably the worst cook in the cast or crew. 
Uh, I make a lot of chicken, I make a lot of pasta, and I make a lot of reservations at outdoor dining here in New York City. But um, yeah, it's been a wonderful, the, the, the positive I think to the pandemic has been the opportunity to take a deep breath and do a lot of writing. Um, uh, I write weekly for Medium, uh, which is uh, an online you know, website, much like much like Twitter or YouTube, it's, it's, it, it houses pieces from journalists and writers across the world. And that's been really fun. It's been really fun to reach people. It's been really fun to talk about the pandemic and the experience of the pandemic. And um, I don't think it's one that we're gonna forget soon, so. Yeah, I always wonder what it's gonna be like, what we're gonna talk like, what we're gonna <laughs> talk when it's after late. It's like, oh yeah, you remember that? You remember 2020? Great year. <laughs> yeah, great year, great year. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And then, so Team Marco comes out November 20th, 2020 on cable, on demand, for sale and rent on all digital movie platforms. Be sure to watch it. This is Catherine reporting for Kids First. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss my next interview or review or those of my terrific teammates. Bye for now. Thanks, Catherine. Catherine. Who are these kids? This is my bocce team. Let's bury them.